SampleKings.com, and we've got a brand new series we just started, and it's called Pro Tools 10. It's on sale now. You get five DVDs over seven and a half hours worth of lessons. Now, here's a video preview. Right now, I'm going to talk about the edit window. This is probably going to be the window you're going to be using the most in Pro Tools as you start out using your Pro Tools session before you start mixing all your levels and signals. Now, here at the top, we have our menu controls here. So you can see our little toolbar controls here. We have our modes right here. We have our tools right here, for example. This is an icon you can see there of a magnifying glass. I can go over here, stretch it over here, and I'm zooming in. I can zoom in or out with that. And this is our tools. Right here we have our counters, and here we have our grid. Now you can actually change the setup here. If you go to this little triangle here on the right hand side, you'll notice here we have zoom controls, transport, we have MIDI controls and synchronization. And this is our minimum minimal setup right here. Now I can go to all, select all, and then we have all of them here. You can see that. And I go here back here again, you'll see we have the zoom controls in, transport, the MIDI control synchronization all selected here as well. And you can see I have MTC for MIDI time control. We have MIDI time clock. And if I want to move something over, I can just pretty much just grab it, click. And on my Mac, I can just press command and click and drag it. Let's say to here if I want to. Let go, and it appears there. If you're using a PC, it's just control, click and drag. Right here in this little lane underneath these controls on top, we have our universal view. And you notice as I move this little area here around in this session, you'll know I move it up and down. I can move up and down the session. This gives me a universal view of that particular area that I'm in in the session. I can shrink the session down somewhat. And then we could see everything in the session. And you can see here, I could see everything, the entire session, move back to here, move over. And if we're, I move further and further, I can see how many session parts that are really long somewhere. I can move back here also. So we can move in the session from this universal view. Now below the universal view, we have here, which is our rulers. And right here, we have, I click right there and you can see the rulers. That means I can measure my session by the start point to the end point. And here I can have beats and bars. So I have this, the first beat, first bar, all the way to, uh, let's say, right here, which is maybe 100, 100 bars. And it gives me a time. I can have a ruler and say, I can be in time. Well, the start of my session is zero minutes and seconds. And the end of it is four minutes and 23 seconds. I can do it according to time code. I pull in time code here, and this is in relationship to time code. I may want to sync in MIDI time code or use empty time code to lock to film. I go here to rulers, and I have choices also of time code too. We've got feet and frames. We have samples. I can collect all, and it brings all these rulers in for me to judge my session or use it. I can also set up the key. This is a major key or a minor key. I can set up the key it is. I can set, well, this session is going to be a minor, it's going to be major. And I can set up time signatures. I can set up chord values. We can set up markers. A marker could be, well, this is the verse, the chorus, that's the bridge right here. I want to go there. You can go there directly. I want to go to the verse, the chorus, or the bridge. So we have these rulers that are right here in the edit window, which makes it so easy for you to get around and to judge where you are on your session. I can also move and hide some of these views because it can get kind of daunting here. you got so much to look at. And you can also see, of course, different color tracks, different colors here in this view, right? So let's pull this down. And you see a little bit more right there. So I may want to hide this universal view. I can always go to here and hide it and go to here and see it again. Or I can go here to the upper right hand corner on my edit window, click here, and then I can hide that view. I can also hide the clips list. See? I can also show my clip list. And I can also show my track list. The next one talk about the track view here. So you earlier that track view. Below that we have a groups view. I can view, for example, a drum group. I can pull a group up, that's my group there. Here in my track view, some tracks aren't even seen. So I can show tracks. I can click here, that little grayed out dot is at, and now I see that kick drum. I can see that hi-hat. I can see the shaker now. 
as you can see right there, right? And so some of these tracks aren't even seen. And to show all tracks, you can go right to this little button. This is our track list pop-up list. And see here we have show all tracks. We can show only selected tracks. We can show only, let's say, MIDI tracks. Let's go here, MIDI. And we only see the only MIDI track we have. We can go back to show all tracks. And they're all showing right there. We can hide all tracks, hide selected, and we can select the groups we want to hide. And we can sort tracks by name, type, edit group. So while you're working on your session, it's good to actually maybe work on one part of your session to maybe hide some other tracks and focus on what you really want to work on.